All right, guys, so um, this video is going to cover how we might synthesize alkynes, so different different forms of alkynes, um, from acetylides. So acetylides meaning, um, you know, those ions that we, we form from acetylene and um, sodium amide. And the question that we're sort of going to, going to illustrate all these, these points with is, is this here is where it says show how to synthesize the following one hexine, two hexine, and then this four methyl, two hexine, um, if possible, using this method. And so for the first one, for part A, I went ahead and wrote this one all out for us already. So here I've got my acetylene. So this is acetylene. It's just the simplest alkyne. Acetylene is its common name. Um, we might also call this ethyne, but acetylene is how we're, we're commonly going to run into it. So that's what I've, I've illustrated here. Here's my sodium amide. So I've got sodium and NH2. And remember that that's really just a source of this NH2 minus, that really strong base. And that really strong base can abstract that proton pretty much no problem. It's going to do this reaction, you know, quantitatively. It's going to do it to 100% completion. So we put this sodium amide in there. We're going to get this reaction where I'm abstracting that proton to form NH3, which is a very stable um, molecule. And then these electrons are going to end up on that carbon, right? So this is an, a little bit of an acidic proton. We're, we're able to deprotonate it. And that's going to get me to my acetylide ion. So this is my acetylide ion. And this acetylide ion is going to react, you know, pretty rapidly um, with any sort of alkyl halides that I want in an SN2 type fashion to form a new longer chain uh, alkyne. So that's sort of the, the goal of this. So here's, you know, my synthesis for the first one for part A, pretty much just one step, you know, form the sodium amide um, to form the, the acetylene, uh, acetylene uh, excuse me, acetylide ion here, and then have that do the SN2 attack on this alkyl halide. And I'm choosing, you know, um, one bromobutane here because I want to add four carbons to my carbon chain. Um, so just making sure that I have the right number of carbons, two carbons here, four carbons here, six carbons in my final product. So let's look at B real quick. So again, if I want to start from acetylene and I can react that in step one with sodium amide, that's going to end up giving me this acetylide ion. And then that acetylide ion, I'm going to want to react with some alkyl halide. So this one, I noticed that I've got an internal alkyne. So I'm going to actually have to do this sort of twice. So I can say step one, sodium amide. Step two, let's do um, methyl iodide first. So methyl iodide is just a simple you know, alkyl halide. And here the, the halogen that I'm using, I'm using methyl iodide simply because that's a, a very common thing to do. Um, you could use methyl bromide. That's totally reasonable. Those are the, just the two most common things that you can use. So that's what I'm using in this video. So the product of this reaction is going to look like this. So draw that a little bit more nicely. So I've added in this methyl group right to my um, starting acetylene. So in step two, I can again do that sodium amide. And that's going to deprotonate the proton here at the end. Let me just make it so you guys can see it. So again, in step two, I'm going to take my um, you know, my uh, alkyne that's grown a little bit and do that sodium amide reaction again. And then that's going to deprotonate the proton here. So if I, you know, was drawing this out, we would have a hydrogen here. This sodium amide would be deprotonating it. I'm going to end up with, again, you know, that carbanion. That carbanion then can react with another alkyl halide. And in this case, now I'm going to add this um, n-propyl bromide. Um, and again, bromine or iodine here, it doesn't really matter, but I want to add three carbons to this chain. So going back here, one, two, three carbons need to be added to this end. I've added one carbon to this end. Um, and this will lead me to directly to my final answer. So this is my, my product here. Now in C, in C, we're going to have to sort of start with this piece, so this is going to be my, um, you know, uh, ion that I'll, I will need. And I'm going to need to add that to a piece that looks like this. So this is going to be a secondary alkyl halide. And this reaction is not really going to go. This is not really going to work. And there's a reason, well, 
this reaction is gonna gonna go. It's not going to give us our desired product. So if this is our desired product, this is not gonna not gonna work out. And let's talk about why that is. So when we're doing these reactions, we've been talking about a lot about sterics and steric hindrance. And I want you guys to, to really start thinking about that sort of as much as possible. So I've made some models. They're a little bit big, but let's let's look, introduce them one at a time. So this model here, this is gonna be my secondary alkyl halide, where this you know orange atom that represents my bromine. Um, hopefully we can see our methyl group up here. I've got an ethyl group over here. So this is this is actually a little model of this um, secondary alkyl halide that we would want to use. And then this model over here, this is going to be a model of my um, alkyne. So my you know ion here. So I've I've painted this green to indicate that that is my uh, lone pair of electrons. So now what we we need to think about is these two molecules. They're going to bash into one another in space, like in the solution, for this reaction to occur, these two things, they need to run into one another. So um, if I sort of hold this one here, and then I'm going to just bring this molecule in, and we, we're going to sort of see where it hits, right? So we're going to get these, these collisions, basically. Um, and if I hit here, for instance, what's going to happen? So if I run into this molecule in this positioning, well, this is very, you know, very basic. It's gonna to want to abstract this proton. So this proton, you know, we can imagine it going and, and protonating this carbanion. These electrons here, they're gonna end up going into this double bond, right? We're gonna form a double bond, and then we're gonna kick off bromine as a leaving group. So this is an E2 reaction. You know, this is what it would look like. We've got attack on this hydrogen. It's gonna, you know, deprotonate, it's gonna, abstract that proton. These electrons here, that's what we would draw coming into forming a double bond. And then this um, right here is sort of coming towards us, but let's turn it a little bit. These electrons here, right, these are going to be kicked off with the bromine um, forming an alkene product uh, and protonating our carbon ion here, or our uh, acetylide ion. Um, now, if we think about do how this would work if we wanted this to actually do our desired SN2 reaction, this ion would have to hit sort of in the perfect position here. It'd have to, you know, get through and orient perfectly and hit right here to kick this bromine off uh, and, and lead us to our final product. Think about all the different orient all the different collisions that will lead to that E2 reaction. If I hit here, if I hit here, if I hit over here, if I hit down here, if I flip this over, if I hit here, all five of those will lead me to, all five of those collisions will lead me to an E2 reaction, right? So let's sort of go through that one more time. If I hit down here, abstract that proton, these electrons will form a double bond here, and then my bromine back here will get kicked off, right? So E2, and, and practice drawing this out, um, you know, practice, you know, all the different places where, where that E2 reaction could occur. And then the only way that the SN2 reaction will occur is if I hit perfectly right through here, if I sort of magically bypass all of this and, and hit this position here, then that SN2 reaction can occur. So um, just want to give you a visual on, on you know, um, why this bottom reaction is not really feasible. I think sometimes when we draw it out, we're like, well, it can just, you know, it can just get in there. I don't see why not. But when we actually look at the models, right, if you make the model, I think it does become a lot more obvious that, yeah, like all, like this methyl group, it's, it's in the way. This this methylene group, it's in the way of that, you know, that backside attack to get in there and, and access that central, pro, uh, central carbon. All right, hope that helps.